So just look at the bottom left and make sure that your yeah, Carmen Miller is on. Uh, hi, Miles. We you are on. Um, we see you and we hear you. So I'm just going to make sure everybody's on mute. Uh, I'm starting uh, the video to. Uh, um, I'm putting it putting it on YouTube, and we're going to start in like 30 seconds. So, um, Councillor McLaughlin, it's. Uh, I think it's all in your hands now. If you want to begin, I'll just share my screen too, so you can see it. You're on mute, uh, Councillor McLaughlin. I apologize. Uh, I'll call this meeting to order. Is there any disclosure of any pecuniary interest? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to item three. Item 3.1, minor variance. Application D13-139, part of lot. 14 and 15 West Smith, concession WMLS and known as municipal as municipal policy <clears throat> at 528 Watt Road. And I'll pass it over to Carmen. So the recommendation is that the Committee of Adjustment approve the minor variance submitted for the property described as being part of lot 14 and 15, Westmeath concession WL, sorry, WML, and known municipally as 2528 Fott Road, granting relief from section 19.2D of Westmeath zoning bylaw number 9813 to reduce the minimum front yard depth setback from 77.5 meters it clearly was a long night last night, to five meters to allow a covered porch and an attached garage. Mover and a seconder. Okay, we're all good to go. Yep. And then uh, then I'll pass it over to Ivan. Yep. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, so basically this file, um, staff are gonna recommend that we uh, don't make a decision at this point in time, that the, the application be deferred. Uh, so we got information as recent as yesterday uh, regarding the road allowance on Fott Road. So uh, while the application here is to reduce the, the minimum front yard depth from 7.5 meters to 5 meters, um, we've, we've gotten information that the road allowance is only 40 feet wide. Uh, so typical ro road allowance for local roads is 66 feet. So... There's a bit of uh, a change in the application in the sense that um, we can, through the Committee of Adjustment and the application of a minor variance, require conditions. And we would typically require a condition in this case for road widening purposes. And the committee would be familiar with that with severance applications, but we are allowed to require that uh, for minor variance applications. Now, if we are to reduce, rather, if we are to increase the road allowance the minimum setback from the proposed house to the front property line changes as a result of that. It's no longer five meters. It's actually more than that. So um, it's actually less than that. So as a result, the merits of the application change here. So uh, staff are modifying the recommendation to defer a decision at this time. I've spoken to Mark uh, Fott, who is the applicant of the, of the file advised them of that this morning. And uh, certainly we're gonna connect with our public works department uh, to see the different options and uh, and return to a committee, committee at the later date. So I'm not sure Carmen, if we need to change the recommendation or if the committee could just vote to defer, please. Can you advise on that please? We can just vote to defer. So back to you, maybe uh, Chair McLaughlin, if, if, if you're agreeable to that, maybe you could put it forth to the, to the members of the committee. Thanks. I think what, what I was thinking, Ivan, we'd have to get uh, consent from the mover and the seconder to uh, defer it. Would that be the proper way of doing this? Yeah. 
Thank you, you Carmen. Yeah. yeah. So I'll ask the mover and the seconder if they are in favor. I they see Carmen play. nodding her head. Yeah. So we must all be in favor then. Yeah. So at this time, then we'll defer that to uh, a later date and get some more information to, to come back. That sound good? Okay, thank you. Then we'll move on to item two, Carmen. Sir. Yep, and the recommendation is that the Committee of Adjustment of the Township of Whitewater Region approve a consent application D10-194 for the property described as part of lot 21 Westmeath concession A EML Beachburg Road subject to the conditions outlined in this report. A mover and a seconder, Carmen. Councillor Mackay and uh, Mayor Moore. Okay, then I uh, will pass that over to Ivan. Yeah, thanks so much. So the present application is followed by Miles England um, for the property that fronts on Beachburg Road. Uh, Miles is with us today uh, virtually. Uh, so essentially what they're seeking to do is to sever off uh, what we'll call a surplus farm dwelling. The committee will be very familiar with this. Uh, what, what it, what's, what's included on the severed property is a dwelling and several outbuildings, including a barn, uh, and the retained lands uh, contain a storage shed. So the property actually fronts on Beachburg Road, uh, traverses all the way to Finchley Road, uh, and is uh, di uh, bisected by the, uh, I think it's the CN rail line. Um, so essentially, um, the proposal here, I think, is uh, Mile intends this, to sell the property to a family member who will ultimately build a new house uh, and demolish the old farmhouse. But, but that's an aside. So the policies indicate that in the agricultural designation, uh, that you're permitted to create lots which are surplus to farm dwellings. In the present case, uh, that, is, that is exactly it. And what we require uh, to do is to protect uh, the agricultural lands. We require that uh, a zoning amendment be put forth uh, to prohibit any residential uses on the retained land. So the one thing to note here while we have the map up is all of the lands that are located on the west side of the rail line, so fronting on Finchley Road to the rail line, those are actually rural designated lands. So they'd be a class four, five, or six. But the lands that are located between Beachburg Road and the rail line, those are agriculturally designated lands. Uh, so they'd be a class of soil one to three. So the, the zoning change to prohibit residential uses will only apply for a portion of the land. That is the land from Beachburg Road to the, to the rail line. We're not going to prohibit residential uses on the rural designated lands because that's not the intent of the policies of the official plan. I hope that's understood. A little bit complex, but I hope that's understood. So straight to the conditions. So we are supportive of the application conditions one and two that survey and be submitted to the township and to the county of Renfrew. Number three, that the zoning amendment be filed specifically for the lands between Beachburg Road and the CN rail line. Uh, the second part to that zoning is that we reduce the minimum setback of an accessory structure. So the one storage building on the retained lands that's going to be held by miles is pretty close to the property line and won't meet the 30 meter setback. So you'll have to include that reduced setback in the zoning. And we don't anticipate any issues with that. Uh, and number four, that the applicant uh, submit to the, to the approval authority that transfer deed of land. So I think pretty straightforward, uh, my, minus those minor minor things for the zoning, but the staff are supportive and we're looking for the committee's, uh, committee's uh, decision. Thanks. Okay, uh, maybe uh, if Ivan is uh, completed, I'll ask Miles if he has anything to add. Mr. England, if you know how to unmute, uh, if you want to say anything, you can just unmute yourself. Can you unmute him, Carmen? Or never mind. Sorry, go ahead, Miles. I think, I think, yeah, I think we're unmuted now. Yeah, good. No, I think that's pretty well it. Yeah, I think I was with uh, Ivan earlier, and we went through all of that. So, yeah, I think it's fairly clear. 
Okay, then if Miles, if that's it, I'll ask if uh, the committee has any questions. I do. Go ahead, Mayor Moore. Mm -hmm. So this goes back to Ivan then. For the second parcel from the CN to Finchley, some of that is scrubland and not suitable for farming at this point. It is Would that be included in the whole parcel so there'd be no more residential or can we exempt that, that section? Uh, so the, the purpose here is the, the way that the condition is worded that it, that area will be exempt from the, uh, from the prohibition of residential uses. So the lands between Finchley and the rail line will allow for residential uses and the lands from the rail line to Beechburg will not allow residential uses. And that'll come forward to the council, uh, council table, table in the near future. Yeah. Okay, thank you, understand. Uh, understood, any other questions? Oh, Carmen? I see none. Okay, I have one question. Ivan, that retained building, is it a shed? It is, it is a shed, yes. So that was the one question I had as well for Miles. So we, oh, there is a, there is a barn on the severed property and we've done the MDS for it and we've confirmed the minimum setbacks will be met. But yeah, your question it pertains to the to the building on the retained lands. It is in fact storage only, no livestock. Yes. No, that that, that was where I was coming for from. And will that be registered on on the deed of that property, Ivan? No, it will no. We don't. We will not require that as a condition of approval. But I mean, if you're converting, I mean, for the general public watching today, I mean, if you're converting storage okay. structures to Live, livestock facilities oh my uh, you're you're required to get building permits so i mean when you convert a building from one use to another you should inform yourself with our building services building department whether or not you need a permit yeah i i, I was just thinking that if miles ever sold this property that the owners would would know that stipulation is there i understand that stipulation so i would hope that uh that part would would be, and I was just thinking about the person that would be purchasing the property. Yeah, I understood, and I, I think I think the approach here is pretty consistent with not. I mean, it may have been required in the past. For the most part, lawyers and purchasers are doing their due diligence and asking those questions, but I, I don't think it. There's uh, I don't think there's a need to register that on title. Okay. That that certainly answers my question. Uh, that was my concern. Anyway, then if there's no other questions, Carmen, none. I'm going. I, okay, I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor? Carrie. Thank you. Sorry. Then we'll that move was you. On. Sorry. <laughs> that, yeah. No, no, that's okay. You're just practicing, Carmen. Uh, then I'll move on to item three and uh, I'll pass that one over to Carmen. Okay. That the Committee of Adjustment of the Township of Whitewater Region approve two consent applications, file D10192 and D10193, for the lands described as part of Lot 12, Westmeath Concession, North Front A, Westmeath Road, subject to the following conditions outlined in this report. Mover in the seconder. Mayor Moore. Okay, then I'll pass it over to Ivan. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, so the present applications, that being two uh, applications, are to create uh, two new lots uh, fronting on uh, Hyla Road. Uh, we do have Brianna Kenny from JP2G Consulting with us, who's representing the applicant, Mr. Parsons. Um, what the proponent is seeking to do is create these two lots. They're 80 meters by 150 meters, uh, and they would fill in sort of two uh, infilled areas uh, front on Hyla Road. Uh, the retained lands, uh, they do front on Westmeath Road. So the, just, just there's a question about that. There's still frontage of the, of the retained lands on, on, uh, on Westmeath Road. Properties are 2.97 acres each, so they're greater than the general two and a half acres uh, that, uh, that in some cases require hydrogeological assessment. Properties will be serviced by on-site water and sewage services, well and septic. 
Um, and the property sizes conform to our zoning bylaw. Few things to note. Uh, these severances will represent uh, in excess of the uh, three or five severances that are generally permitted in the official plan. We have consulted with the County of Renfrew uh, and they are agreeable to uh, exceeding the maximum number or the number of five severances per the official plan. So just as one note uh, to the committee. Um, so just getting into the, the conditions and some of the matters of the official plan. So the subject lands are located within a significant woodland. Uh, they are in proximity also to some, some, some ravine lands or some, some water courses. Uh, the property owner did submit an environmental impact assessment, uh, in, as well as a planning justification report. Uh, both demonstrate that there'll be uh, minimal impacts to the environmental features in the area subject to certain measures. Uh, we will require that those uh, studies uh, be registered on title through an agreement. Uh, secondly, the wildland hazards. So the properties uh, are identified as being within a wildland hazard area due to the ex existing pine trees. Uh, the official plan requires that an assessment be completed and we've listed that as a condition uh, of approval so that the applicant submit a risk assessment site review using the Ministry of Natural Resources risk assessment tool. And then lastly, uh, there's, there's uh, inferred karst topography in the area. Karst topography is uh, a certain type of uh, soil being limestone and dolestone that uh, may pose issues for stability. Uh, we are gonna require karst inspections uh, to be done for both properties and those karst, karst inspections are done by our CBO subject to a small fee. So staff are supportive of the applications uh, subject to certain conditions, one and two surveying. Number three, so road widening, uh, so that the uh, surveyor can firm the road width of Hila Road uh, in front of these two severed properties and confirm that they are in fact 20 meters wide. Number four, that the owner do the karst inspection. Number five, that the owner do the wildland fire site review. And number six, that the applicant provide the approval authority a transfer deed of land. So staff are supportive subject to these conditions. Thanks so much. Carmen, uh, I understand that Brianna Kennedy, Kenny is with us. Does she have anything to add? Uh, thanks, Chair. Just a few points of uh, clarification for staff, if that's all right. Um, just the wildland fire condition, we did submit um, the county's wildland fire risk assessment checklist with our planning report. Um, I guess I'm just wondering if there's anything further needed um, on, that, uh, on that item. I'd say no, so we'll just have to review it and uh, and then just cross off that condition. Okay, great, thanks, Ivan. And uh, just one more thing: um, will a development agreement be required as a condition as well? Yeah, I noticed. I noted that it wasn't there. Uh, I think the reason why it wasn't noted probably because the uh, you know the the impacts were quite minor in nature. So um, we will not require the development agreement. However, uh, when, when, when development occurs there, uh, we will review the development in relation to the, to the study. So uh, nothing at this time, but be cognizant to the owner uh, that at the sale of the land and future development, we will review the development, uh, the building permit applications in relation to the studies. Thanks. Okay, great, thanks, Ivan. That, that's it, uh, Brianna? Yes, that's everything, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any comments from the committee? Councilor McKay. Go ahead, Councilor McKay. Yeah, just this is kind of this is the kind of uh, lots I like. It's not on farmland. It's not near a building, and it's utilizing that road. It's a very nice road with nice houses, and I kind of like this kind of stuff. So I'm all for it. Thank you. Any other comments, uh, Carmen? I see none. Okay, then uh, I will ask for a vote. All in favor? 
I see Carmen nodding her head, so it's carried. Thank you, Carmen. And we'll move on then to the next item. Uh, this is for minor variance D13136 um, 228A CADS Trail. And the recommendation is that the Committee of Adjustment for the minor variance. I'm sorry, I was reading the last thing. Committee of Adjustments approved the minor variance submitted for the property described as West Meath Concession A, CLF Lot 4, and no, municipally known as 228A CADS Trail forming part of 280 CADS Trail, granting relief from section 3.32 of the West Meath Zoning Bylaw 9813 to allow use of a CSA approved outdoor furnace on a portion of the property located in West Meath, or located in the waterfront vicinity WV zone. A mover and a seconder, Carmen. It's done. Then I'll pass that over to Ivan. You'll know yeah. the mover and the seconder. Go ahead, yeah. Ivan. Thanks so much. Uh, so we do have uh, Mr. Spears here today uh, to speak to the application if needed. Uh, essentially, we have the property in question is 228 uh, Cadge Trail, or rather 280 Cadge Trail. Uh, 280 Cadge Trail is a, is a particular property in our township. Uh, in the case of that property, uh, they have a special zoning category on the property that allows for multiple single family homes on it. I think probably ranging in the, in the 10 to 12 units, all on this one property. And you'll note the address for the specific house to which this outdoor furnace will service is 228 uh, A Catch Trail and not 280 Catch Trail. But essentially uh, just for the committee's purposes, the number of dwellings that are there are permitted. Uh, they do have zoning approval from, 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 from a few years ago. Uh, they have site plan approval. Uh, they also have ministry approval for the number of septic systems on the one property. But what Mark Spears has before us here is a request to grant relief from our zoning bylaw to allow a CSA approved outdoor furnace within the waterfront vicinity zone. So while the outdoor furnaces are allowed throughout our township, uh, they are allowed in the industrial zones, the rural zones, the agricultural zones. Uh, they are not permitted within the waterfront vicinity zone. So that's one piece is to allow it in the waterfront vicinity zone. The one thing the committee members might be thinking, well, it's really close to other houses. Well, it is close to other houses. However, the policies indicate that there's a minimum setback to property line, which will be met. And there's a minimum setback to the nearest dwelling on a separate lot. Now, all these houses are on the same lot, so he complies with that setback. So he meets the setback. Um, so he complies with everything else other than the zoning category. Uh, the next thing to note here is that we would say, well, what about the neighbors? Do they have any concerns? Well, the application has been filed uh, by the, the representative of the corporation who owns this property. And as I understand it, there might be a board or a, a series of members who uh, sort of support uh, the executor of, of the application. So uh, the members and the owners of these properties should be, or uh, at the least, the person who has the ex executing authority has signed off on the application thus in, in my view, uh, implies that the residents in that area are supportive of this outdoor furnace. So those are the complexities here. I mean, staff are supportive of the application on those basis. Uh, there are four tests that need to be assessed. Uh, one and two, that it maintains the intent of the official plan and zoning bylaws. So again, uh, there's no change in the land use here. Uh, there's there's no change in, in reducing setbacks or anything of that sort. So the, the intended use remains the same other than the outdoor furnace. Uh, the zoning bylaw, so as I've noted, it does uh, allow for outdoor furnaces. However, it uh, can't be any closer to a certain distance from an adjacent lot on a, an adjacent dwelling on a, on a separate property. In this case, there are no dwellings on adjacent lots within anywhere within a one kilometer of the said furnace. So it uh, should be pretty negligible impacts on adjacent lands. Uh, the variance is minor, so uh, the, uh, the proposed furnace will meet CSA approved setbacks to houses, to other out, outdoor buildings. So again, this thing will be constructed subject to a building permit. 
and uh, and will comply with the uh, the the operating procedures of the furnace itself. Uh, and fourthly, um, you know, while this uh, the furnace, um, you know, will will be appropriate for development. I mean, uh, certainly it's not affecting uh, other properties or other houses on other properties. So staff are supportive of that, and and we feel that it's desirable in this particular case. Uh, so staff are supportive of the application and uh, certainly look for comments from the committee. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, does Mr. Spears have anything to add? Uh, no, that sums it up quite well. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any comments from the committee? I do. Just wondering, okay. Ivan, um, did do they have to have wildland fire photography done? Um, I am familiar with this property. Um, there is a lot of bush, a lot of pine and stuff in there. Just wondering if the furnace has spark arresters and uh, if the fire department should be doing a tour first. Uh, so we do not require the wildland. I haven't required the wildland hazard assessment. I mean, certainly if the committee feels that it is needed, uh, we, we could impose it, uh, that we have the authority to do so through the Planning Act. Um, the building department will be inspecting the location of the furnace and they could they could investigate, you know, setbacks to trees. I mean, probably good practice, we do it. So, I mean, Mark, if you're agreeable to it, basically it's a checklist. It, it indicates, you know, your distance from the furnace to the bush and, and so on and so forth, construction materials for the houses in the surrounding area. Uh, not overly onerous. You could do it yourself. I mean, if you're agreeable to it, or, you know, certainly we could implement that. Is that fine with you, Mark? Or um, Well, I, I should point out that uh, the insurance company is quite particular about these very things, and they've insisted on um, a spark arrestor cap for the unit. Um, they've also insisted on a, a fairly sizable setback from any combustible material. So there's at least 20 feet of uh, setback to any combustible material. And uh, the outdoor wood boiler is located on a, uh, a concrete pad, which is surrounded by gravel and sand. So the, the, the chances of uh, fire are, are really negligible. Um, so I would really prefer not to not to have to go through more um, more processes to get this approved, and as as Ivan mentioned, the the setbacks that the CSA have um, implemented for this particular unit will be met, and and they're really uh, quite negligible. It's it's 18 inches around each side in the back, and uh, four four feet from from the front. So. All of that will be respected and again uh, the insurance company is, is quite particular about this and they've already been out to inspect it and uh, they said they will approve it <laughs> given uh, I get the appropriate uh, building permit from the township. Yeah I'd say I guess I mean the reality is is that the specifications of the unit itself would establish certain setbacks. Um, you know I'd be comfortable to say that those are probably sufficient uh, and, and if the insurance company is providing support, then that's, I would say I'd be agreeable to that. Um, I mean, if the committee wishes to impose it, they can, uh, but I, I would, you know, I would sort of recommend that. I mean, if the, you know, it might be onerous to require that given that the unit requires certain setbacks, but I leave it to you, the, to the members of the committee. Okay. I'm happy with that. <clears throat> Knowing the insurance company knows it's there and the CBO is going in for a, preliminary or a final report, whatever the CBO is going to do. So at that time, if he decides there's something wrong, then he would let us know, I'm sure. Okay, any other comments? Nope. Okay. <clears throat> no, I meant from the committee. No, nope, I see none. Nope. Okay, my, my question, Ivan, is this, this seems to me to be a first, on the waterfront in, in with a waterfront vicinity have we are there outdoor furnaces on in other parts do do are you aware uh, you're asking if if outdoor furnaces exist on other properties in this zoning category 
Yes. Uh, well, I mean, they may exist, but they probably haven't received a building permit. Um, I think what I was conversing with our CBO recently in the last few days, and what they're finding is just as a result of you know going through the community to do inspections, they're noticing a lot of these outdoor furnaces are being constructed without permits, and maybe it's an educational piece. So uh, as part of our, our, our monthly current, we will be including information in that and, and perhaps through our Facebook page. So I'm not familiar with other exceptions uh, that would that would have been provided similar to this exceptions to allow an outdoor furnace in the waterfront vicinity zone, uh, but certainly I mean it may exist, and I think it's a matter of educating residents that they need permits for these units. But, but that's that would be it. I, I think uh, I'm just having a little bit of problem because it's a waterfront uh, vicinity. I understand the the setbacks are all met, and uh, the, because of the property lines. Uh, that would that was my only concern, Ivan. Yeah, uh, that, I think I, but, I think. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I think I'd go further to say that it's probably not allowed in the waterfront vicinity because traditionally lots are really really close to each other on waterfront properties. If you go up Rapid Road, I mean, every thirty meters is a new new lot, right? So. I guess it just wasn't really a location where we should have these things. So that's probably the reasoning for it. But I think in this particular case, I, I, I think there's merits to allow it just because of the, the vast size of the property. Okay. I, I'm just worried because uh, all, all I'm thinking of is uh, the neighbors that, that will be, and I realize they're not within our just the distance, like yeah. all the distance have been met uh, and I take it the, this group of people they seem to be in consent uh, that, that was my only thoughts Good. but under this circumstance uh, I can understand why and I can understand the reasoning behind it so I think that that was my main comment and I guess if, that, if that's answered if you feel that, that we can go ahead, then I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Carmen? Yeah, it's good. Okay, thank you, it's carried. All right, then we'll move on. And I think the next thing is the minutes, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Where is it? so that the Committee of Adjustment approved the September 15th, 2022 minutes. Do you have a mover and a seconder, Carmen? I do. Okay. Is there any uh, comments from the committee? Seeing none, then I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Yep, I got them. Perfect, thank you. And thank you very much. And then I guess the next thing is the adjournment. Yep. And that sounds good. We don't need a mover and a seconder to adjourn, do we? No. No. Okay. Well, thank you very much and appreciate it. That's great. Yep. Fast Thanks, okay. everybody. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Right. We'll see you this afternoon. Yeah. I can't hang on either.